Now it is the time to look at a very popular Islamic microfinance model, and that is Murabha based model of Islamic microfinance. This is, in terms of practicality, very close to conventional microfinance. However, in terms of operations, we would say that this is quite different from the conventional microfinance. We mentioned that in case of Mudarba and Musharaka, there are similarities between Islamic microfinance and conventional microfinance in terms of provision of cash to the microfinance recipient. In case of interest-based conventional microfinance, the microfinance provider gives money to the recipient. So is the case in case of Musharaka and Mudarba based Islamic microfinance model. In case of Murabha, however, the financier would like to do a Murabha, i.e., would buy merchandise from the market and would then sell the mer merchandise to the recipient, microfinance recipient on a Murabha basis and on a deferred payment basis, right? So in this respect, it's actually not cash based. Many industry observers think that this is a lot better than the cash based models, given that there is a lot of misuse of microfinance money is being observed. Ye jo gharib dehat mein log hote hain, unhe paison ki zhurat hoti hai. Aur paison ki zhurat could be for a variety of reasons. So they can actually receive money from a microfinance provider and spend it on something else. Kisi rishtedar ki shadi a gai, udar ja ke pachas hazar rupay kharj kar di. It's quite possible. Aur phir kehte hain ki mahinne ke baad hum thode thode dete rahenge. So to curb this kind of practices, it is a good idea to buy the merchandise from the market or any other income generating asset and give it to the microfinance recipient with which they should be generating some income for themselves. And in terms of frequency of payment to the microfinance provider, the story is uh, quite similar to other models. So we have in this case an Islamic microfinance provider which buys 50,000 worth of merchandise and then sells this merchandise to the recipient for 60,000 for a profit. So that merchandise is then used by the recipient to generate income. In this example, income is 120,000 out of which 60,000 is the cost. So as per our previous discussions, we find that in this particular example, the recipient rece retains fifty thousand dollars or fifty thousand rupees, and five thousand rupees are actually given to the Islamic microfinance provider as the monthly installment. If this continues for twelve months, the Islamic microfinance provider would have received the 60,000, which was the Murabha price. And this is what the microfinance provider would be looking for. Now, a general point I would like to emphasize that Islamic microfinance and conventional microfinance, they have helped a lot of women. Women empowerment is on the big agenda of uh, the multilateral institutions like World Bank, IMF, and other multilateral institutions. And this agenda has trickled down to 
national governments as well. So microfinance is being used as a tool for women empowerment. And this is something which Islamic Development Bank based in Jeddah has also adopted. So a lot of microfinance provided by Islamic Development Bank through its national partners is actually targeting women. So women empowerment in Mali, women empowerment in Chad, women empowerment in Senegal, especially the African continent, this is on a very big agenda of the multilateral institutions, including Islamic Development Bank. So those who are looking for bringing a social change, Islamic microfinance is an excellent tool. It is an excellent tool to reduce poverty. As all of us know that in Pakistan there is widespread poverty and a lot of people are financially excluded, i.e. they do not have access to capital, access to finance. If Islamic finance targets these people and offer them affordable Islamic microfinance, this could become a very good opportunity for Islamic banking and finance to grow in this country.